Have you ever wondered how something as tiny as a virus can have such a dramatic impact on human health? Dive into the intriguing world of viruses, a realm so tiny yet so powerful. Viruses are peculiar creatures, if we can even call them that. They teeter on the brink of life and non-life, exhibiting characteristics of both, yet fitting neatly into neither category. They are microscopic entities, far smaller than the cells they invade. A thousand viruses lined up in a row wouldn't even reach the width of a single human hair. How do they function? They are essentially genetic material encased within a protein coat. This genetic material can be either DNA or RNA, but never both. This is the blueprint, the instructions that tell the virus what to do next. The protein coat, or capsid, is like a suit of armour that protects these precious instructions. But here's the catch. On their own, viruses are as lifeless as stones. They don't eat, they don't breathe, and they certainly don't reproduce. They can only multiply within the cells of a living host. They are the ultimate parasites, relying completely on their host for survival. Upon finding a suitable host, a virus will latch onto a cell and inject its genetic material inside. This turns the cell into a virus factory, churning out new viruses until the cell is so full it bursts. This is where their impact on human health comes in. Our cells are not just tiny building blocks, they are the very essence of our being. When viruses invade our cells, they can cause a range of diseases, from the common cold to life-threatening conditions like HIV and Ebola. So while these tiny entities might seem insignificant, their impact on human health is anything but. As we continue to explore the mysterious realm of viruses, we unravel more about their structure, their multiplication and their cultivation. Keep tuning in as we delve deeper into the world of these microscopic invaders. How can something so small cause such big problems? The answer lies in the intricate structure of viruses. Imagine a microscopic entity, invisible to the naked eye, yet powerful enough to bring the world to a standstill. This is the paradox of the virus, so simple in its construction, yet so complex in its operation. Let's dive deeper into the structure of these fascinating entities. The fundamental structure of a virus is made up of two primary components, a protein coat, known as a capsid, and the genetic material it encases, which can be either DNA or RNA. The capsid is like the armor of the virus, a protective shell that shields the precious genetic material inside. It's composed of protein subunits, cleverly interlocked like the pieces of a 3D puzzle. The capside not only safeguards the genetic material, but also plays a key role in the virus's ability to infect host cells. Inside this protein fortress lies the genetic material, the DNA or RNA. This is the command center of the virus, containing the instructions that allow the virus to hijack the machinery of a host cell and replicate itself. Some viruses have an additional layer, known as a lipid envelope, which is acquired when the virus buds from a host cell. This lipid envelope is essentially stolen from the host's own cell membrane, and it can be studied with various proteins that help the virus enter other cells. This cunning use of camouflage allows the virus to slip past the host's immune defenses. So why do viruses differ so much in their effects? It's all down to their genetic material. Different viruses have different sets of instructions, leading to different outcomes when they infect host cells. In essence, the structure of a virus is a masterclass in minimalist design. Each component has a specific function and works together to ensure the virus can not only infect host cells, but also evade detection and destruction by the host's immune system. With such a complex structure, it's no wonder that viruses are able to wreak havoc on human health. Now that we understand what viruses are and how they're structured, the question remains, how do they multiply and spread? The replication cycle of viruses is a fascinating dance of biological mechanics. It begins with attachment, where the virus latches onto a host cell. It's a bit like a spacecraft docking to a space station, but on a microscopic scale. The virus uses specific proteins on its surface to attach to complementary proteins on the cell, ensuring a secure connection. The next step is penetration. Once the virus is attached, it injects its genetic material into the host cell. This is the equivalent of an invader slipping a coded message past the castle gates. The host cell, unaware of the intruder, reads the message and begins to follow the instructions. Uncoating follows penetration. This is where the virus sheds its outer layer, revealing the genetic material within. 
It's a bit like taking off a disguise to reveal the true identity underneath. With the coat gone, the virus's genetic material is free to interact with the host cell's machinery. Next comes replication. The host cell, tricked into thinking the viral genetic material is its own, begins to produce new virus particles. It's a bit like a factory churning out products, except the product here is more of the virus. Assembly is the next stage. The newly formed virus particles are packaged together, ready to be released. It's like packing a suitcase before a trip, but in this case, the trip is to infect more cells. The final stage is release. The host cell, overwhelmed by the viral particles, bursts open, releasing the new viruses to infect more cells. It's a dramatic finish to a complex process. In labs, viruses are cultivated in host cells for research. It's a bit like growing plants in a greenhouse, but instead of tomatoes or cucumbers, the product is knowledge about how viruses work. The ability of viruses to multiply so rapidly is a key factor in their ability to cause disease. Let's delve deeper into a specific example to understand how viruses function. The human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, serves as a prime example. HIV is a retrovirus, a type of virus that uses RNA as its genetic material rather than DNA. Now, this is where the virus gets clever. It carries around its own personal scribe, an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. This enzyme has a singular purpose, to transcribe the virus's RNA into DNA after it infiltrates a human cell. It's like a stealthy spy changing its disguise to blend in with the crowd. Once the RNA is transcribed into DNA, another enzyme integrase comes into play. It integrates the viral DNA into the host cell's DNA. This is where the magic happens. The virus essentially hijacks the cell's machinery, forcing it to make more copies of the virus. Now let's talk about the virus's outer layer, or envelope. It's studded with glycoproteins, which are like keys that unlock the door to the human cell. These glycoproteins bind to receptors on the cell surface, tricking the cell into letting the virus in. Once inside, the virus sheds its envelope like a cloak, revealing its core. The core is a protein shell that protects the virus's genetic material. It's like a fortress that shields the virus from the host cell's defenses. Inside this fortress, the virus carries all the tools it needs to reproduce, including the RNA, reverse transcriptase, and integrase we mentioned earlier. The clever structure of HIV allows it to infiltrate human cells undetected, reproduce, and then burst out of the cell, spreading the infection. This is how HIV causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or AIDS, a disease that weakens the immune system, making it harder for the body to fight off infections and diseases, the structure of HIV provides insight into how viruses can cause such devastating diseases. So what have we learned about viruses and their impact on human health? Well, we've taken a deep dive into the fascinating world of viruses, exploring their inherent mystery and how they manage to be so impactful despite their microscopic size. We've uncovered that viruses, while not technically living organisms, possess certain characteristics that allow them to interact with living organisms, specifically humans, in profound ways. We've analysed their complex structure, how they are composed of genetic material encased in a protein coat known as a capsid, and sometimes an additional layer called an envelope. This structure, while simple, is incredibly efficient, enabling viruses to infiltrate host cells and use their machinery to reproduce. Speaking of reproduction, we've unpacked the process of how human viruses multiply and are cultivated. This process, known as the viral life cycle, involves several stages from entry into the host cell to the release of new viral particles. This ability to hijack our body's cells and turn them into virus-producing factories is what makes viruses such potent pathogens. And of course, we've delved into the specifics of the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. This virus, which targets the immune system, offers a prime example of how understanding a virus's structure can aid in the development of treatments and preventive measures. HIV's unique structure, with its envelope and embedded proteins, plays a critical role in its ability to infect immune cells and cause disease. So where do we go from here? It's clear that these tiny entities can have a major impact on human health. Understanding them, their structure and how they operate is the first step towards combating them. Knowledge is power, and in this case, it's a potent weapon against these microscopic invaders. But our journey doesn't end here. There's so much more to learn, to explore and to understand. 
So why not join us as we continue to delve into the intriguing world of science? Subscribe for more because you won't find me later. Let's keep discovering together.